Hi, this is Precalculus. These are notes for section 5.1, Composition of Functions, or just in general, Composition of Functions. So what we want to be able to do is be able to simplify a composition of functions, and then also write individual functions that, when composed together, represent a more complex given function. We'll probably do this in class, uh, but this one is what we're going to mainly focus on for this video. Why don't you warm up with these two problems and see if you can do them. Pause, and then I'll come back with the answer. For the first one, then, we take 3 and we plug it in wherever we see x. You take out the x, put parentheses, and plug it in. So if we simplify this one, in the room we're going to get 7, and down below, 9 plus 4 is 13. I hope my arithmetic is correct. Now, if you haven't tried this one, do the same exact thing, except for instead of putting in a 3, you're going to put big parentheses and put this x minus 1 in. So go ahead and do that. So I plugged this x minus 1 in there. Now I can distribute and simplify the numerator. So I get 2x minus 2 plus 1. And in the denominator, <clears throat> this one here I can expand. So this is x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4. And then if I simplify this overall, I get 2x. This would be minus 1. In the numerator, in the denominator, I get x squared that's hard to read there for myself, but that would be minus 2x, and then I had a plus 1 and a plus 4, which gives me plus 5. You would look at this to see if you could factor and cancel, but there's no way that I'm going to get that factor from the numerator and from the denominator. Okay, so what we just did was we did a composition of functions. I took one function which is the f function, and then I took the g function, well, I call it a g function down here, I take this x minus 1 and I put it inside the f function. So when I write this out, just make sure that you set up big parentheses. I think that's the easiest way to say it. Same thing as plugging in a number, but now you're going to plug in an x minus 1. And so we use this right here. This is taking g and plugging it into f. And what we do with that is you just write down f, put big parentheses where the x was, and now you put g inside. How we write this, though, is the funny part. It's f of g, like this. This is a composition notation. This mixes these people up. I don't know where it came from exactly, but I remember when I was in school learning this, I'd go, okay, yeah, I got it, I got it, and then I'd always get a little confused. So what I like to say is that this notation, f of g, all, whenever I see this little circle here, I just put a left bracket. And whenever I think of that, then it seems to work out easy for me. So circle, left bracket, cover up this g of x. And so the, the g of x goes into the f under this system. Now, what does all this mean? Well, under a composition of functions, I'm going to take some domain here, x. And with that, I'm going to apply the g function. And with the g function, I'm going to get g of x from that. And then... I'm going to take that g of x, and I'm going to apply the f function. So therefore, I'm going to get f of g of x, where g has to be in the domain of f for this to work. And or I should say g of x has to be in the domain of f. And we can jump over all of this, if we wish, by using our new notation, which is, which is f of g of x of x okay so that's kind of the idea that we're dealing with here now let's go to some examples and try these and see how they go okay so if I see this right here f of g of 2 I have three functions laid out here for you so we're going to do a few problems with these same three functions so I see that circle I'm going to put a left bracket and cover it up like this. So I can take this and do the g of 2 first. So that's what I'm going to do. So this would be f of g of 2. Well, if I take 2 and plug it in there, I'm going to get the square root of 7. So this now becomes f of square root of 7. Hopefully you can do that in your head. Now with the f part, I'm going to take and put big parentheses wherever I see the x. And then now I can plug in whatever this value is. So this would be the square root of 7. And if I simplify this, this would be 7 minus 5, 
which we all know is 2. Okay? Try this one, and I'll come back to you. I hope you paused. And then here it is. So I found what f of 2 is. That's my inside. Found that it's negative 1. Then I plug it into the g function by putting big parentheses wherever I see the x from here. And then I simplify that to 2. Hopefully you got that one. Try the next one and see what you get. So g of 2 is square root of 7. We found that out from a 4. So now I got g of square root of 7. Ooh, this is going to be kind of quirky. Wherever I see my x here, I'm going to replace it with square root of 7. So I put in square root of 7, so oh, I get a double square root. Should be okay. It's all positive. All right, moving on. Second page. This is in terms of x. And so this will be a little bit more on the simplification side and start practicing with functions again. And that's kind of the main idea that we're going to be dealing with here. So f of g of x, same exact functions as before. I'm going to take this g and put it into the f function. So this would be f of, what is my g? Square root of x plus 5. So now wherever I see the x in this function here, I'm going to put big parentheses. So this is going to be squared minus 5. What do I put inside? Well, that's going to be the square root of x plus 5. Quantity squared. Ooh, do these just cancel. Isn't that correct? Well, maybe, maybe not. But if I take the square root of x plus 5, I need to make sure my domain is correct. And so we got to be careful with that a little bit. We know that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5 here. That's going to be part of our domain. And so when I deal with this, that will also be our domain here. So if I do square this, this still would be x plus 5. And then I get minus 5. And so this overall becomes x. And you just got to remember for this answer, I was restricted by my domain in the first place. So even at the end, I still have that domain. So you look at the domain before and after to see to make sure that you're doing okay. f of h of x. So now if I look at this one, I'm putting the h of x inside this one here. So once again, for the f of 2x, some of you will have to write this step down every time, and that's fine. That will help you a lot. So wherever I see the x in this one, I'm going to put big parentheses. If there's more x's, I put more parentheses, but that's what I'm going to have. And inside now, I'm going to put this other function, 2x over x plus 4. And now if I square this, this is 4x squared. Squared has to be applied to the numerator and the denominator. So this would be x plus 4 quantity squared. I'm going to multiply that out right away. So I double the product, and then I square that. And then this is minus 5. With this, I need to get a common denominator and simplify this a little bit more. So this is x plus 4 quantity squared. I guess I didn't have to expand that out. However, I did. And uh, so this would be 4x squared. And then minus 5, I need to multiply this. I have to multiply the 5 by both uh, top and bottom by this denominator to get that common denominator. And then if I distribute here, I'm going to get 5x squared well, this is plus a negative 40x, and then this would be negative as well. If you multiply by 5, half that number out of 0, so that's 80. And then this is all over x squared plus 8x plus 16. Simplify the numerator. I get negative x squared minus 40x minus 80 all over x squared plus 8x plus 16. And with that, you can just leave that. You can't factor and cancel this. This is not factorable. This denominator is, but you still can't cancel anything. So that's all that we have. Moving on. Number 6 says h of f of x. So I'm going to put now the f of x into the h function. So this is h of x squared minus 5. 
So what this turns out to be is big parentheses wherever I see the x, big parentheses wherever I see the x. What do I put inside? Well, that's that x squared minus 5 again. So then this is 2x squared minus 10 all over x squared minus 1. Oh, I can factor this. I can factor that. But nothing will cancel. You can check that for yourselves. So that should be in simplified form. OK, so I hope this gives you an idea on the composition of functions. I have one more here that we have to do where it has now three functions. I want you to think about what we're going to do with that. Well, hopefully you thought about it. You're going to start way here on the inside, and you're going to keep on moving out. So I, I have the g of x. That's going to go inside of the f. So let's see what happens with that first. So this would be f of f of my g of x, which is the square root of x plus 5. Now what i got to do is put that into the f function. So this would be f of. Wherever I see this x, I'm going to put in square root of x plus 5. And then that would be quantity squared, and then minus 5. I guess I didn't need all those parentheses. So now this is x plus 5, square root of x plus 5, put into the f function right here. So if I look at this, I can probably simplify this a little bit. Well, this is the x plus 5 minus 5. Ooh, I get x again. So this would be f of x. We always have to kind of be careful here because if I have the square root and then I square it, you got to think about domain issues. Once again, we start off with x greater than or equal to negative 5. So that will hold true down at here at the end. Wow, that all cancels out. This is just f of x. So since it's just f of x, I'm left with x squared minus 5. I take this x and put it in wherever I see x. <laughs> That's where I ended up. Now I have one final question here. for num In number 7, we did this. We put the g function into the f function first, and then we applied this all inside of the f function. Now my question is, is could you have gone f of f? So in other words, put this f into the f first, gotten a new function, f of f, and then put the g function in. Is it the same? I want you to go ahead and maybe find this one, give a conjecture first what you think would happen, and then go ahead and show and see if it is exactly the same thing. One last thing that we want to do is figure out our domain. So if we have these problems here. I, I'm going to go back here a little bit. And we're going to have domain issues that we have to look at. And let's look at this number 6 and talk about our domain. We use the h and the f function. So with the h function, I know already that x can't be negative 4 because that would make this thing undefined. So since I'm involving that h function, I have to worry about that. But also, what happens is that what happens at the end? And what is my domain at the end? Well, if you look at this, I could factor this one. x can't be negative 1 or 1. So when we look at the domain of h of f of x, I have to make sure that f of x never equals negative 4. When would that happen? Well, x, uh, f of x equals negative 4 when x equals negative 1 or 1. So what you can do is you can take this f of x and look at it once it's inside of the h function, or you can just go to the end and say, oh, this is my domain. I, I, I have a problem here at negative 1 and 1. So try to look at the domains and see what happens at the end. And sometimes you have to see what happens at the beginning too, but that would be for the inside function. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and take care, and we'll see you in class.